Welcome to the tutorial for using the Google app AnyMeeting. To find this app, you will need to log in to your email account through the Chrome browser. Once you have logged in, you will see a menu across the top. We will select the More option, and we will select any meeting from our list of choices. When the screen appears, you may receive an ad about upgrading. Scroll to the bottom and click on No Thank You, Continue with My Free Plan. Now that your home screen is up, you may see different messages. For example, there is an update for a plug-in. There is information about site maintenance being planned. What we want to focus on is how do you start a meeting. Let's take a look at our two options. Our first option is to start a meeting now. Our second option is to schedule a meeting. You'll notice to the right that you have a meeting URL, a place for your public profile, and your free conference call phone numbers. Notice that you have a presenter access code and a guest access code. Let's start with Start a Meeting Now. Use your mouse and click on Start a Meeting Now. The first thing that you need to do is give your meeting a title The next box is where you invite your attendees. You have up to 200. Make sure that when you type the email address in, you separate it by a comma. Or simply press enter and put each address on a separate line. You do have the options to select from your Google contacts. Search through your contacts and add checks to the names of those that you are inviting to your meeting. Let's add a few contacts to our meeting. The next box is a message to your invited attendees, which is optional. This is a great place to remind your attendees of what the meeting's about and any materials that they need to have prepared for the meeting. The next option is your discussion mode. Using discussion mode, everyone can talk and be heard. In listen only mode, only the presenters can be heard. After you have made your selection, click Start Meeting. At this point, you will need to choose your audio. If your computer has a built-in microphone and speakers, you can use your computer. If your computer does not have a built-in microphone and speakers, and you do not have an attached microphone, you will need to use the telephone. Next, a message comes up reminding you of things for best results. Once you understand, click Got It, Thanks. If a flash player warning comes up about your settings, it is okay at this time to allow the computer to have access and click Close. 
Let's take a look at what's available on the home screen. Starting with the left side, we can see any of the attendees that have joined. We'll be able to tell how many are online, how many are on the phone, and how many are unmuted. You also have a chat window on the left that allows you to have a sidebar conversation. This is a great location to post questions during presentations. In the middle of the screen, we have the name of our meeting, who it is hosted by, and the date of which it is occurring. We also have a place for meeting options. Currently, we have discussion mode checked. This means that everyone's microphone is unmuted. This may cause echoes. The second option is the question and answer mode, where attendees can unmute themselves. By clicking on All attendees are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star 6. So all of our attendees are muted, and as they're ready to participate, they can then unmute and join the conversation. And our last option is listen-only mode. All attendees are muted. This means that all attendees are muted and they cannot unmute themselves. Let's explore the toolbar along the top. Our first option are meeting options. This is where you will go to click and change the meeting options that we just discussed. Our next box is the invite box. If during the meeting there is somebody else that needs to join that you neglected to invite, click invite, add their email address, and their note. You can send them the email invitation or you can share them your meeting link. Now click the send the email invitation to invite the new member. Our next option is record. If you would like to record your meeting to use at a later time, simply click record your meeting. Once you click on the start recording, your recording will be stored in the servers at any meeting and available on your account manager screen. Give the recording a moment to get started before beginning your meeting. Now that the countdown is completed, you will know that your meeting is being recorded. Some other options that you have available to you, the camera. By clicking on the camera, that will turn on the webcam and you will be able to be seen by all of your meeting participants. This allows for a more personal meeting. This screen appears so you can see what your webcam broadcast will look like. Take a look at the preview and make sure you're ready to broadcast. Love the box that says to check your hair and smile. If you're not seeing your picture, you may need to go to the drop down menu and look for your web camera. Select your bandwidth quality and you're ready to broadcast for your webcam. Now your meeting is a personal meeting where your participants are able to see you. If at any time you would like to stop the webcam, click on the camera option and your web camera has now been turned off. Let's hover over the microphone. During your meeting participants may have trouble hearing you. By hovering over the microphone you can take a look at your volume control. You can also look at your audio options. And if your microphone is just not working, you can always click on switch to telephone and call in for the remainder of the meeting. The next option is share. You have four different things that you can share with participants during your meeting. You can share directly from your computer screen. That means whatever you see, they see. You could share a video from YouTube. You would have this video and link prepared in advance. You can share PowerPoint and PDF documents by uploading them into your meeting and then everyone would be able to see them. 
And finally, you could run a poll for your audience. Select this option and ask them a question and they will have the ability to vote. Our last option is My Mood. This is a place for participants to let you know that they're fine, that they're not having any technical difficulties, they're with you. The second option is a place for them to raise their hand if they have a question during your presentation or during your meeting. The last option is the yes and no. Participants can answer your questions when you say, does everybody understand? Do we need more clarification? They can select yes or no to help you poll your audience without everybody having to physically answer through a microphone. Now that your meeting is finished, click on End Meeting. This will not only end your meeting, it will log everybody in the meeting out. When the pop-up appears asking if you would like to end the meeting, click on Yes, End the Meeting. You may receive a questionnaire about your meeting from the Any Meeting group wanting to know about your session. This helps them improve their technical support and their meetings. Click on the choice that's most applicable to your session and close the window. Scroll to the bottom of your Any Meeting homepage and you will see a section that shows any upcoming meetings that you have scheduled, any past meetings, any recordings, polls, conference calls, training and support in your content library. These are all available areas for you. We recorded that meeting so we can click on the recordings tab and see our meeting. Notice it has the date and the time. We have the ability to play it, edit its settings, we can delete it, we can look at the viewers and we can get details about the meeting. If you would like to share this meeting with additional participants that were unable to attend, simply send them the audience URL. If you conducted polls during your meeting, your polls will be available for you to see. Let's look at scheduling a meeting. Click on Schedule a Meeting, enter a title for this meeting, Select the date for your meeting. Choose your time. Decide how long in minutes that you would like this meeting to go. Select your time zone. Notice that the suggested login time for the presenter is at least 15 minutes before the meeting. This helps your participants be able to log in prior to the meeting starting. You also have the option to take this into a reoccurring meeting. So if this is a meeting you would like to have every Tuesday at 2 o'clock, you could make this reoccurring. Your next option is to choose emails from a previous meeting you'll notice it auto populates the attendees if there are additional presenters besides yourself you can add them to this category the email subject is already created for you now you will create the message. You can pre-plan your audio mode by putting everybody in discussion mode where everyone can talk and be heard or listen mode. Would you like the attendees list to be public? This allows everybody to see everybody else that's in the meeting.
we're not going to do any social networks so we're going to skip the public profile and social notification settings we have the option to schedule a meeting or we can go to next by clicking on the next option this is a location for a registration form you can select for your participants the ability to register so you can learn a little bit more about them if you have some custom things you would like to know you can create your own question you can add some terms of service if this is something you're collecting payment on you could put in your payment information you can also select notifications and reminders to remind them to come to the meeting if this is a meeting that is being enrolled in and it's based on the first come first serve you can have a maximum amount of participants that can register we can then click on next we could create a survey if prior to the meeting there are some questions we would like to know in our survey we also again have the ability to create a custom question we can click next then we have the option to preview what our message looks like and click on finish and our meeting has now been created and the email notification has been sent now we can return to our account manager now that we've returned to our home page we can check to make sure that our meeting has been scheduled we will scroll down make sure to click on upcoming meetings and you will see the meeting here you can make any changes needed to the meeting when it's time to start the meeting click on your any meeting home page and click on start this meeting and the meeting will begin this concludes the tutorial on any meeting how to start a meeting and schedule a meeting thank you for listening and have a great day